Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You know, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. You know, God is a good God, and it's you know good to be here. Just one more time to you know share you know with us. You know, as you know, we feel led of God. You know, first of all, must greet each and everyone that is streaming online, streaming. Amen. And, you know, we pray God richest blessing upon you all. I want to extend apologies for Bishop Daly. You know, something urgently, you know, came up and it was really, really urgent. And he had to, you know, attend to it. You know, so tonight I'm just going to fill in for Bishop. And as you know, he has been dealing with, you know, relationships. And he has gone into you know, a whole lot of what the Bible says about relationship. But tonight we want to look a little bit at relationship also and we want to deal with communication in relationship. But before we go any further, um, I just want to invite us to just bow our heads while I open in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight again for your love. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, God, for your blessings and for your grace towards us. Lord, it's indeed an opportunity, mighty God, to be here sharing, to be here listening, and to take your words, Lord Jesus, and apply it, Lord God. We ask, mighty God, that as we go into scriptures tonight, as we discuss matters pertaining to relationships, we pray, mighty God, that you will bless, that you will help us not to resist, but that we will take that which is said and apply it, God, that we might um, have better relationships. We thank you again for being in our midst, for we are two or three are gathered, touching anything concerning you. You will be in the midst to bless. We bless your name one more time as we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we, we want to look a little bit at communication in relationships. And Bishop has been dealing with you know relationship and one of the things that he said you know a couple of weeks ago was that when God made Adam and Adam was there tending to the garden um, he said that it was not good for a man to be alone so this was now after God made everything and when he made it he looked and he said it was well done but then when you look over at man, Adam was there, he was not created as yet. He said that it was not good for a man to be alone. It then tells us that as individuals, we are social beings. We need somebody to relate to. We need somebody that we can talk to and that we can share. And, you know, it therefore means that relationships are important. And I support Bishop, you know, 100%, you know, as he deals with matters pertaining to relationship, because it is extremely important, right? So as we look tonight, we want to, you know, focus a little bit at communication in relationships. You know, for a relationship to exist, there must be communication. If there's no communication, it, it is kind of hard for you to develop that relationship. I know that the Bible says when David, after David slew Goliath and he came to Saul's house, Jonathan looked on him and immediately their soul was knitted. You know, there was a, a bond, there was a friendship from that time between David and Jonathan. But in most relationships, we are going to find out that it is going to take communication. It's kind of hard now for us to just look at somebody one time and kind of have that soul bonding. There is going to have to be some amount of communicating among individuals before individuals kind of let down the, the, the guard that they have and allow you to come in their circle or allow you to get in their circle. But at the end of the day, communication must take place. And it's after communicating for a while 
then individuals will become more comfortable and will let down their barriers and their guards to accept you within their circles. So communication is important in relationship and it is important in any relationship and, and I can't overemphasize right how important communication is in relationship. Just doing a little bit of introduction to have a successful and healthy relationship there must be good communication for example if we take our relationship with god for us to have a good christian walk for us to have a good relationship with god there must be communication which means that we are now going to have to spend time and talk with god we are going to have to set a time apart and we know that this is the time that you know, the Lord meets me at this place, or this is the time I meet the Lord at this place, because there is a, a communication that is going on, right? So for us to have a good relationship, there must be communication. If we're going to have proper communication with our spouse, our relatives, there must be good communication you're going to find that siblings um will have a kind of tension between them and if you find out that if they are not communicating properly with each other there is going to be difficulties brothers and sisters in christ if we do not get the communication thing right you're going to find that among believers in church among believers in church, brothers and sisters in Christ, you're going to find out that, you know, there will just be animosity and, you, and, and we can't agree with each other because of the lack of good communication. So if the communication is right, then you're going to find out that basically all relationships, whether it be with God, whether it be with relatives or spouse, brothers or sisters in Christ, or whether it's just a friend, you know, a classmate, you're going to find out that it is important that we get the communication part right. Communication spans across all sphere of marital relationships. When we talk about finance between couples, finance is also one of the issues that cause divorce and cause break up in relationship you know but if persons communicate well you're going to find out that they can communicate and solve the the, the, the financial issues if it's child rearing issues if it's in-law issues if it's the sharing of duty around the house even if it pertains to sexuality you're going to find out that once persons master the, the communication that they will have a good relationship they will enjoy their relationship with your friends with your spouse with your relatives but it is important for us to get the communication part right lack of communication lack of communication is the number one reason for failure in relationship. A survey was done years ago of, by a counting professional um, from yatonga.com. And this is a digital leader in love and relationship. And they stated that of a poll involving 100 divorced persons, 65%, I want us to listen to the number, 65% stated that communication was the number one reason for their breakup. So these are folks that were married and no divorce. And when they were asked to give the number one reason why they end up in divorce, 
They said that communication was the major problem. It is alarming. But it also tells us the weight that needs to be placed on communication within our relationship. I want us to know as children of the living God, as married folks, as school persons with our friends, that communication is important if the relationship is going to last. It, communication in the relationship now is an effort with both parties. So one person cannot say that I want to have a good relationship and communication is important. So I am going to try to do my best. Yes, it's important for that one individual to try. But if communication is going to work and the relationship is going to be right, then both parties that involve are going to have to try their very best to communicate the best way possible to each other. Sure, there are reasons that contribute to the breaking up of relationship. Yes, we said um, finance is one of them. Child rearing is another one. Uh, how you deal with your in-law. All of these things break up. Marriage, a simple thing as a car can break up a marriage. But if, we, if it's going to be tight, the communication must be right. And I'm using that word tight there to say that you know, things will be unbreakable. Things will be unmovable between two individuals. Once the communication is right, then things will be tight. You ever hear that? Say, yeah, man, we are tight, man. We are bridging and we are body. So if the communication is right, then it's going to be tight. And I want you to just bear that, you know, like a thought in mind. Because if the relation, if the communication is right, you are going to find out that it's going to be hard to separate both persons. It's going to be hard for any little thing to come into the midst, to break up the relationship. It's going to be hard for Satan himself to come in and step inside your marriage and break up your marriage. So the communication must be right. And I'm imploring, you know, especially our married folks. And I'm imploring those who have an intent to get married. That, you know, understand that when you get in there, that communication is going to be a key for you to have a successful marriage. It's going to be key for you to have a successful relationship. So the aim tonight is for us to understand what is communication and we are going to go through the communication process to be able to identify communication issues slash breakdown barriers and the impact poor communication has on relationship that is the aim so that we can find out that poor communication practices tend to break down relationships. Another aim is for us to overcome or fix the communication issues that we have because you're going to find out that even after years of marriage, there is still something that we can fix to have good communication you know, among both parties. Another aim is for couples and prospective couples to have better communication in their relationship. And then proper communication starts with us. It's important that we know that proper communication starts with us. So what is communication? Communication to communicate to someone or communicate to someone that you love them. So you might be in your living room, you might be there with your family, just turn to somebody and tell them that you, know, you love them. Communicate to them that you love them. So what is communication? And I guess probably most of us would, probably just a while ago, say to the next party, I love you. 
But as we discuss, you are going to realize that even if you did not say I love you and you would do something else, it will communicate that yes, I love you. So what is communication? Communication is derived from a Latin word which means to share. It is the activity of conveying information through the exchange of ideas, feelings, intentions, attitude, expectation, perceptions are common as by speech, gestures, writing, and behavior. So if we look even on screen and we'll see Sister Jennifer signing, that is a way of communicating to the hearing impaired. So we are going to find out that communication is more than just speaking. Communication has to do with everything that we do. Next slide. So look at the process. For communication to take place, there must be one, a sender. So the sender is the one that has the idea. And while the idea is being developed, you're going to find out now that the sender has to deal with the internal noises. And then the sender now is going to send that message. And that message now has to go through a medium. And while the message goes through the medium, there are external noises that will distort what the sender wants to send. And then there is the recipient that has to now take that message and try to decode it so that he can understand the message. And while he is decoding it, there is also internal noise that will distort how he or she receives that message. So the idea comes from the sender and the sender send it through a medium and then the receiver has to be coded but let us look at it a little bit on the next slide so the sender the thought first exists in the mind of the sender and this can be a concept it can be an idea it can be information or feeling the message now is then so the feeling that the sender feel the information or the idea that the sender comes up with, he now then sends that message with the intent that the receiver will receive it just as how he sent it. The medium used to send the message can be words, can be sign like the person on screen is doing, it can be action. An action, yes, that action will communicate something. The destination or the receiver could be an audience, it could be a reader, or anyone who the message is intended for. So note, because the medium can be words, signs or action, Anything can communicate something to the other party, especially in marital relationship. So let me say that. Because the medium can be by words, signs, or action, anything can communicate something to the other party, especially in a marital relationship in 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 some so social relationship you're going to find out that you know some persons will overlook some things but in a marital relationship it is kind of hard for some folks to look, overlook some things and anything you do you're going to find that it communicates something you are always communicating something to your spouse or married people Folks that intend to get married, you are always 
communicating something to your spouse. If you say something, if you don't say something, if you smile, if you don't smile, if you look, if you don't look, how you dress to go to bed, you are communicating something to your spouse. Married folks, I want you to understand this. You are communicating, you are always communicating something to your spouse. So if you don't say anything, you spoke, your, your spouse having a conversation with you, and you don't say anything, you don't respond. You are communicating to your spouse that, look here, I'm not interested in the conversation that you are trying to have. And we are going to deal with it as we go down. If the spouse is communicating something to you and you are into the television, you are communicating, to, you don't say anything, you know, but that is communicating to the spouse that you are not interested in having a conversation right now and if we are not aware after a time when the spouse come and want to have a conversation and you're always in the television always on the phone always on social media you're going to find out that the relationship is going to break down there comes a time when you have to put the social media aside, where you have to put everything aside and make sure that you have a conversation with your spouse. You are always communicating something and whatever you say or whatever you don't say is communing, communicating something. So married, married folks, I want us to bear this in mind. Because you're always communicating something to your spouse. So you're always communicating something to your partner. And listen this now because you all know it, you know. Action, your actions speak louder than your words. Your action speak louder than your words so you might say i love you with your mouth but at times your actions communicate something else to your spouse but how he say him love me and him keep on doing that how she says she love me and she keep on doing that that is not love she can't love me and keep on doing that he cannot love me and keep on doing that because our actions speak louder than words. We don't have to say something to our spouse to communicate something to them. So you are always communicating something to your partner. Even when your mouth is closed. How you deal with the partner. You are communicating whether you love them or you don't love them. God loves us as his people with an everlasting love. But at the same time, we go through some rough times. But the Bible says, as we go through those rough times, that is how we deal with us as sons. And the rough time does not change how much he loves us. So I know that the relationship, there's going to be some ups and some downs. But how we deal with our spouse, we'll communicate to them if we love them. Or if what we are saying is just a word of mouth. So I love you. But you're just talking. Because love speaks it aloud. The things that you do, say, I love you. 
Sister Bailey, look here. Sister Bailey, sometimes don't even have to communicate and, and say, look here, I love you, Everton. But the things that she do, just tell me that, look here, this, this lady love me. And I appreciate it. And I try in turn to make sure that the things that I do communicate to her that I love her. And this is separate and apart, separate and apart from me saying no that I love you. So while I speak it, I try as much as possible to make sure that my actions back up what I say. Your action is so loud that it blocks out what you're saying. And if we are not careful as married folks, we are going to find out that as we speak, our action is communicating something else to our spouses. So communication goes through a medium from the sender to the receiver, and it goes through a medium. This means that there is some amount of misinterpretation that will take place. And the true intent of the sender is misconstrued, misconstrued. So the sender might send a message. The sender might send a message. The recipient then translates the words or symbols in a concept or information that he or she can understand. But sometimes it is affected by the current temperature and state of mind of the individual. So sometimes the sender send a message. And as I was getting ready to come, something came up in mind. You know, that happened last week between me and Sister Bailey. And Sister Bailey don't mind when I talk about, you know, me and her. So look here. I came in and I said something to her. But the response that I got, or should I say, how oh, I interpreted the response was not sh what she intended. I don't recall exactly where my state of mind was. But the following words that she said helped me now to better understand that what I decoded from the message was not what the sender intended so you understand how it works the sender might send a message but because of your state of mind because of the rough day you had at work it just comes across you interpret it a way in which the sender did not mean any at all so we must understand then that the, 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 the temperature, the state of mind it, it, it is going to, it is what we call communication distorters and they will distort the, the, the real intended message. It therefore means before we even interpret or if we, if we think we are going to interpret what the sender did not mean we have to ask a question. And this is why feedback is now important. Because we have to now ask, is this what you are really saying? And then you explain to the sender what is it that you interpret. The sender will now send another message and say, no, that is not what I mean. This is what I mean. Sometimes it's how we communicate. Sometimes it's, it's our choice of words. But at the end of the day, we are going to find out that feedback. Don't just run away with the first interpretation that comes to your mind and say, this is what, how she supposed to say that to me? I am the man of the house. No. But if you don't interpret it right, or you feel within yourself, because you have been with this person for years and you know how the person operates you must know that look here i am in i think i'm interpreting this message in the wrong way so let me know ask a question 
to get a feedback to find out if this was the real message that was intended. And I tell us that if we practice some of these things, we are going to find out that our relationship will be much better. And while I talk about feedback, let me just follow as I feel it here. You see, it's important wives and it's, it's important husband that we give our husband feedback, that we give our wives feedback. What do you mean by feedback, Brother Bailey? When we deal with systems in engineering, one of the things that help us to know that the system is working correctly is feedback. So we use temperature gate, we use sensors, and we use other things to get a feedback to see if the system is working correctly. You get where I'm going? So if there comes a time, you must get a feedback. Honey, is there anything else? Is communication to you? But this time you ask the question, honey, is there anything that I should be doing that I'm not doing? So whether you be husband or wife, there comes a time when you, when you must, and as men, you know, the bishop on it, that men, you have the responsibility to make sure that the thing is going right. So at times what you need to do, is to get the feedback. Honey, how am I doing thus far? Is there anything else that, that, that you think I should be doing that I'm not doing? Is a way of getting our relationship right. So it's important then. The feedback is important. It tells us if the system is working correctly, yes or no. And I would encourage us as men to make the first move. Honey, tell me, just tell me. I am willing now to, to make this form of change if, if, if you tell me. I'm going to try it. But as men, I'm challenging us to step up to the plate and ask our spouse if there is anything else that we need to do if we fall short on anything. So communication, we're finding out now that it's important and that, and I want to tell us that communication is hard work. And when some folks hear about hard work, they, they, they can't bother with it because some folks like, you know, when things are easy, you know, once it's easy, it can give me to do, but you know, if it's hard, you know, don't really give me to do. But I want us to understand today that communication is hard work. Communication in relationship is hard work. Why? Not many people know how to express themselves. And this is very important. You might be married. I am married about 20 years now. Right? And I'm smiling, Sister Bailey. Hope I get that one right. But sometimes I still feel cute to say some things to my wife and we are friends from a long time from before we get married but sometimes i feel like it could be cute to say some things so not many folks know how to express themselves especially as us men we don't really know how to express ourselves to our spouse sometimes men are afraid to say i love you because if him say I love you, him don't feel like him much and he don't feel like he's the man. I know a guy that was in a relationship with a young lady for probably about five or six years. And it, it was when the young lady packed her bag and left out of the house, that was the time he was regretting that he was not able to, to express himself to the lady. And when he was now expressing himself to the lady, when the lady came, the lady said, Boy, I can't believe say you love me. Because your action did not say that. How you deal with me did not say that. You don't tell me that you love me. 
and me went through a hard time. Call on what the youth and kill. But look here. As men, we cannot be afraid to express ourselves. Oh, glory to God. As a matter of fact, I feel like challenging some of us. That when we get up in the morning, you know, some folks, some folks, I kind of deviate a little bit, but let me go. Some folks, they're in the house together, sleep in the same bed, and when they get up, not even good morning. How can folks be living in the same house, sleeping in the same bed, and when they get up, not even good morning? But yet still, I love you. You have to find a way, and this is where, and this is where communication is up. You have to find a way you now to express yourself, to show appreciation for the spouse. So in the morning, in the morning, you, you have to practice some things. So when we finish praying in the morning, and we don't necessarily pray together, once we, part, once we come and meet each other, we have to hug up each other. Not all the time when in the morning we say, I love you. But the hug alone communicates and look here. I love you. It's just some simple things we have to practice, you know. And if we practice these simple things, I am telling us, brethren, that some of the problems that we have as married folks is because we're not practicing good communication. We take some things for granted. So not many folks know how to express themselves. And that is why communication is hard work. You are going to have to know, come out of your comfort zone. You are going to have to come out of your comfort zone. If you want the thing to work, so if you don't know how to express yourself, practice how to express yourself. And as men, Holy Ghost, sometimes we don't even want to say we're sorry. So after we see the situation, and we know that is we wrong. We too much of, don't know how to express ourselves because of our muchness, if there is such a word. I will fail to say I am sorry. But make the wife do something wrong. You want to hear the wife apologize and say that, look here, I am at fault. But when it's our turn, because of our manhood, you know, we don't want to say, I am sorry and I'll try not to do it again. So it is hard work because folks do not know how to express themselves. Two, it is hard work because people sometimes tend to think negatively. What do I mean by this? So Parties are in a relationship. And when something is said, the only thing that is received is something negative. Even when the sender sends the message with all good things, the receiver receives it negatively because the thought is negative. But the Bible says that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So even if out there in the world, persons is just pure negative thing. Now that you're coming, Christ, your mind must be changed. Hallelujah. And you start now think on things differently. So persons think negatively, and you're gonna have to work to overcome. You can imagine now the send that somebody is receiving everything you're sending. The person is receiving it negatively. Can you imagine how much work the sender has to do in order for the person now? To, to really understand what the sender is trying to say. Communication is hard work. Why? Because most of the time persons 
argue about the facts. Yes, but what I'm saying to you is the fact. And this is the fact of everything. Behind a conflict, instead of focusing on what the experience was like for each person and how to resolve the conflict. So once the first thing is right, and, and, and that's your point, yes man, yes man, not looking at how the other party felt while going through the situation and how to resolve the conflict and move on. So you find out that something which would be so easy to say, I'm sorry, and, I, and, I, and let us move on. Because married folks not to talk to each other. Married folk to build up a wall because they're arguing about the facts of the thing, the facts behind the conflict, and not focusing on how hurt the person was, not focusing on, on, on how to resolve the conflict. It is hard work again because number four, assuming or assumption that you know what your partner is going to, what your partner is thinking. So some folks, even before the partner finish, uh, finish communicating the idea, before they even finish communicating the message, and some of the time in our day-to-day -day relationships, we, we, we find some of the time we say some things to some people, and before you finish, the person now try to finish the thought that you have. And it is never a good thing to do when partner assume that they know what the partner is going to do. Well, me and my wife kind of think alike, you know. Because if I'm at work and I think it's two piece for dinner, when I come home, I say it's two piece. I don't know, I don't know how there's that connection. But I don't know what my partner is thinking. So I have to allow her and we are going to deal with it. I will now have to allow her time to communicate what she's saying and if i don't understand it i'm going to follow up that with a question to make sure i understand before i give a response so it is hard work because people lack compromise so when persons are in relationship you're going to find out that at some point in time or another there must be compromise and compromise is not done on one side compromise must be done on both sides if you find that you are the one that is always compromising something is wrong hallelujah something is wrong if you are the one that is always willing to compromise So it is hard because folks want to get on with the relationship. But because folks fail to compromise, you're going to find out that it's hard to get past a little situation because one person, in any, ta in any situation that occurs and a compromise is required, you're going to find out that for one party, the situation, the, the, the thing is not so much important. So you can give up and say, look here, you will deal with that man. That's all right, me all right. But there's another time now when the thing is mean so much to me, where the other party now would have to give up and say, look here, you won because, and it's not because the last time you compromised, but because this thing, I know that it means much to you. So you go ahead. And these are some of the things that will help our relationship to be better. So it is hard work again because criticizing or belittling each other. And I mentioned it earlier on that we need to appreciate each other. Instead of looking at the negative and criticizing your spouse, belittling your spouse, be able to tell your spouse that look here, all when the food salt. So why the food? Look a bit salty, but look here. 
You cook this before and trust me, it is good. You know, the little salt get. You have to find a way, even when the thing is kind of, kind of, kind of negative, to, to, to think on the positive. And that is why I talk about the mindset before, because some people think just pure negative. So even when it comes to telling your spouse something, it's something negative you can't find. Can't find anything positive, anything that will uplift. Can you imagine? Living with somebody. You know, I think last week Bishop Bishop said when when somebody asked a question, you know, about separating. But you can be in a house with somebody, you know. And it's just emotional distress. You can't function at work. You're emotionally you break down you stress out because in your house that you're living in you always have something to deal with your husband belittling you the wife belittling you and it just go on and on and on we're not we, 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 i am not saying that you must separate yourself because you're being belittled or because you're being criticized negatively all the while you know because communication can work it out if both parties are willing to work it out. But don't just sit down, wives. Just sit down and say, boy, look here. Me, me, me have to take this. No, you don't have to take it. Talk and, and make, make the husband know that, look here. I am feeling hurt because you keep on doing this thing. And you notice our kind of statement, right? I am feeling, you're expressing your feeling. I'm going to go down to that a little bit from this. But I am feeling hurt because I am being constantly criticized. I am being constantly belittled. And I don't feel good about it. Communication is hard work because when two parties come together in a relationship and i want you to learn this young couples two parties come together in a relationship you are from different backgrounds so being from different backgrounds you are going to find out that your chain of thought how you deal with things, how you solve problems is different from how your husband think and from how your husband solve problems. The Bible says that God made Adam from the rim. So the man now is, is a rough and coarse and, and, and just don't know how to express himself, don't know how to him just rough and everything. But the lady is so refined because she was made out of the ribs of the man. And God now expect this rough, coarse, thick man to mesh with this pretty, refined lady. But God know that it can work. And that is why he put Adam and Eve together. Because he know that it can work. Look, I feel like I'm talking with authority tonight. You know. I don't want to hear anybody tell me why their marriage can't work. I, that is so, I don't want to hear it. Why it can't work? If God see that, he make man, and he make man a certain way, and he make female a certain way, and he put them together, and God say it can't work. Who am I to tell you that your marriage can't work? Who are you to say that your marriage can't work? And God see that. Who God put together the Bible said, let no man put us on that. But you are from different backgrounds. And you spend your life from zero to, let's say you get married at, at 23, 24. So all that time, you have learned things a particular way. All that time your spouse has learned things a particular way. 
But God said the two of them can come together and it work. So even though you are from different backgrounds, you are going to find out now that once you are willing to practice the communication and get it right, you are going to find out that both of you can come together and the relationship work. How is it that, 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 that I am... I deal with things hands on. And I love to work out things. But Sister Bailey, she 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 don't deal with things hands on, so to speak. And she is the very fine and the softer type. And the relationship is working. It is because both parties, a problem that we have as married folks is because both parties are not willing to sit down and say, look here, let us discuss this thing and let us come up with a solution. For the conflict that we have. People rather to, to, to let the conflict escalate. People rather to give sh cold shoulders than working out the thing. Not realizing that is a window you give the adversary. Them say give an inch and him take a yard. Give a yard and him take a mile. If you give the adversary an inch, just one inch in your marriage, he is going to put a foot in there and he's going to separate both parties. So though you're coming from different backgrounds, I am telling you that it can work. Different presuppositions, different beliefs, different way of thinking. But it can work. Because God said it can work. Who him say who giant? Let no man put a son that God said it can work. That means that if God said it can work, I am telling you that it can work. But both of you have to be willing. Both of you have to know, come together, sit down and discuss the thing. Irrespective of what went wrong. Hallelujah. Irrespective of what one party did. It can work. Jesus said you're supposed to forgive your brother 70 times 70. And some people say how much time that. But I guarantee you that God has forgive us, forgiven us. More than 70 times, 7 already since we start serve God. And He's still forgiving us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Hallelujah. I feel I'm talking to somebody tonight. So look here. Both irrespective, I don't business under the Holy Ghost. What anybody do, I am saying that if both parties make up their mind and say, look here, it can work, it can work. Do or you come from different backgrounds. So you're going to find out that communication is hard because you come from different backgrounds. And you're going to have to know, find out that between, between six months to probably two years, it's probably going to be some of the difficult, the most difficult times in marriage because that is the time now. Both are you rubbing together and getting to know each other. Because see me and come live with me, you know. It's two different things. So when you're in courtship, you don't see certain things. You don't see that the man take off his clothes. You take off, you just come in and take off his shirt and leave it for the city. And that not taking up until him go and wash. If you tell him that, look, you're coming over, but you're carrying a friend with you, you know, he won't clean the place, so you're not going to come, come see that. But you say, when you're married to him, he might go take off the shirt and leave. He might go take off the shoes and leave. Hallelujah. How is it that you're going to deal with that? Different background. You know how you used to you take off your, your, your clothes, you drop it in the basket. So though you're from different backgrounds, you're going to find out now that this communication can fix that. And after a time, and you're not going to fix in a day. So get that out of your mind. It is after a time that 
He's going to use the basket and put the clothes in. He's going to take the shoes. So, so I have a little man cave, right? I have a little man cave. So when my wife come up on the man cave, I don't want her to move anything. If she move, me watch if she move, but don't move nothing. You're going to the man cave for something, just leave the man cave as you see it. Because if you don't see it, it's not going to make nice. But look here. When we go outside of the man cave, she don't want me clothes at a certain place. She don't want me shoes at a certain place. And I have to make sure that look here. They try and, and please her as much as possible. Because we are just men and, and, and some things that we just do. But how is it now that, that our relationship break up because I keep on leaving my marina in the city? No, we must can sit down and discuss it on both parties. And the party that has the, 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 the weakness try their best to make sure that they were punished. And we're supposed to compliment. I'm going into some of the things that. But we must come, look here. Really appreciate. I really appreciate how you, 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 this week you, you put the shoes where they're supposed to go. How you put the marina where it's supposed to go. You know? God bless. Keep up the good work. These are things that will help the individual to, to do it even more. So, communication is hard work again because fewer attempts to connect with each other. When some folks have problem, the first thing they begin to do is to resent the spouse. They begin to put up a blockage, put up, put up a wall. You want your spouse now to come and search your mind and say, look, or read your mind to say, look here, this is what I did wrong. Or this, no, but you now have to say to your spouse, look here, this is what was wrong. And both parties sit down and discuss it. But it can't be because I want something, it, you don't try to attempt to connect with each other. Your spouse trying to attempt to connect with you, but you resent your spouse. And your spouse don't know what they did wrong. The friend that you have don't know what they did wrong, but you resent them. It might just be that you misunderstood what was trying to be communicated, and you build up a wall. It's important for us to communicate these things so that individuals when we sin, God, God, God talk to us, you know, it can speak us through the Holy Ghost. So if you feel the conviction and you don't repent, something wrong. So if your party it, do something, just communicate and say, look here, I don't really like, you know, this, I feel a way how this thing was done. And see if the thing can fix. Next slide. But, we must understand that, you know, these are some of the things that will make communication hard work. It is hard work. That is why to get it right, if we get it right, it is going to be tight. If we want to be tight, we must get it right. In a relationship, communication allows, listen to this, it allows us to, one, share our interests. It was not good for man to be alone. So what? Adam wanted to, he couldn't talk to the animal then. So you want somebody no way that you can express yourself to. You want somebody that you can talk to. So in a relationship, and this is why we must get it right. It's hard work, but we must get it right. Because in a relationship, it helps us to share our interests. So my interest is basketball. Thank you, Sister Bailey. No, Sister Bailey knows that LeBron James is my favorite player. But she don't watch basketball. But what she don't know, she spend the time to know. Some other time the match go on, she come and she stop. And she say, Everton, hold your side. But other interest that I have, I can share with her and I can talk to her about it. It's a place that you can share your aspirations. It's a place.
place that you can share your feelings. You can share your concerns. And you can support each other during difficult times. Because even though we're in a relationship, you know, you find out that sometimes one party, one party might be going through difficult, a difficult time in the relationship. And it's a way of expressing how you feel, how that situation causes you to feel. And it's a way you know of the other party supporting you. So this is why we must get it right. It is hard work, yes, but we must get it right. So few people bring strong and effective communication into their marriages. It is not something that is in it. So good, good communication is not in it. But it can be cultivated and developed. So every marriage goes through rough patches. However, the demand for a long-term, healthy, and committed relationship will compel both parties to develop proper communication skills. So if both parties want to have a long-term, healthy relationship, you're looking on Bishop and Sister Daly and you say, well, they have a nice relationship. It's so I want my relationship to be. But when the work that they put in, you are not willing to put that in your relationship, but you want a relationship that somebody else put in the work. But persons who want to have a good relationship, right? They will be compelled to develop proper communication skills. Couples who have healthy marriages try to express their love and respect for each other in everything they do and say. So this is what I was saying. Don't focus on the negative. But try to express gratitude for the simple things, the small things. You get dinner at night time, thank you only for dinner. Oh God. Look at some simple things. You get breakfast. Look here, you're going to work. You're going to work. You're supposed to reach at work 6 o'clock. And your wife get up and make breakfast. So you take up the breakfast, put it on the dish, put it on your, your lunch bag, and don't say thanks. Hallelujah. You can't be so ungrateful. Let me put it nicely. Can't be so ungrateful. If the lady get up, oh God, I feel that one here. If the lady get up, you're supposed to reach her work at 7 o'clock. And you go to work with steam blowing on your face. You get up and cook. And cook yam and dumpling and banana. Cook your favorite meat kind. And you don't you pick up the food and don't tell her thanks. And get her a kiss on jar before you go away. We are not grateful if we do that. Try not to talk how I'm feeling. We are not grateful if we do that. So men, I'm challenging us, man. When you come home at evening time, and when you come home, Lord Jesus, look here. Probably, I probably I couldn't tell you this, use this medium to tell you some of the things. But I regularly, I tell my wife, so look here, you need to open a restaurant. You have a full of lyrics. I tell her, I say, look here, you need to, to open up a restaurant. Because when I buy lunch, I work in a nice stuff. And when I reach home, and steam are blowing on my face, I say, honey, me, thank you. Thanks for dinner. Mighty God, look here, man. Look here, look here. As men, we need to get it right, man. We need to get it right. Right? So, the couple that understand the importance of communication have set goals to learn the skill necessary to make it happen. You think it's just something normal that, that I know tell Sister Bailey and, and compliment her about her cooking. And no, it's practice, but practice it.
So, is she out of my time when she comes to church? And will I make food? And I say, yes, you look nice in my baby. She can't read my mouth. And I say, yes, you look nice. When she read to him, and I say, look here, you look nice here, man. You think she don't want to hear that? But we practice these things, we practice these things. You can. Holy Ghost, I want to be myself. You can't be in your house with a lady, man. And you know, tell her she look nice when she put on her clothes. And you make when she walk in to work and next man and tell her, I say, boy, baby, you look nice. You have to tell her that. It's not that I know it's enough, I'm going as the Holy Ghost be. You have, Lord Jesus, man. You have to tell her them something there. You look nice. You can't be in the house and make a next man put a road and see her and tell her that. You have to, it's communication, you know. It's communication. Say, yes, babes, you look nice. I like that. What is necessary, man, for us to practice is hard work, but it's necessary for us to practice and understand the importance of communication and set goals. Set goals. I am going to compliment my wife. I am going to compliment my husband. I am going to compliment my children. I'm going to be forthright with them. If they look bad, I tell them that they look bad and, and, and that is unacceptable. But we have to compliment them. Compliment the children. Compliment the spouse. So look here now. Take time to talk to each other. Hard work, but this is what you have to do now. So this is something I practice because I... I, I understand how important communication is. So this is what I do. It's when I come home, I'm going to say, good evening. I'm going to put down, I'm going to put down, wash out my hand, comb it. I'm going to sit down at the table because wife is working at the table. I'm going to sit down. I am trying to get in the talk time, you know. Most evening, I'm not going to tell you every evening, but most evening, the mistake that we make as married folks, the only reason why you love the person in the first place is because you spend a whole lot of time talking with them. When I met Sister Bailey, I never liked her for married to her. She did not like me to marry me. But then we start talking. And we don't understand how powerful communication is. And once you start talking, you start talking, you start talking. You know what happened? You start developing feeling. We understand, we see how you know, powerful communication is now. You're not going to look for the person that does like them. But talk to them today. Talk to them tomorrow. Talk to them next week. And then you start talking to them, talk to them, talk. Eventually, you develop feelings after time. But I say, I like that really, man. I say, sister, I like you. But when I just see her, I never like her that way. Then. She was just my friend. But because we start talking now, and because we start talking now and talk and we start calling each other on phone, eventually you now something develops in the heart. And because I know the power of communication, I know practice that when I go home and I'm telling us as men, the reason why some we have some problems in our marriage is because we move from the first principle things, the things that get the feeling that we are about the individual. We move from that. So now, we, we, we take it for granted, we're in the same house. So because we're married now, we're in the same house, I don't have to come in and spend some time, an hour or 15 minutes, talking to you. And that is where enough of us went, went wrong. 
Many folks who have problems right now, that is where you're going wrong. I am telling us right now, those who have, who, who, who mean their marriage well, those who mean the relationship with your children well, spend some time and talk with each other. So I don't talk to the children as much as I talk to Sister Bailey. But there comes a time when I have to know, go in them room, sit down and talk with Brian, sit down and talk with Jaden, sit down and talk with Andre. I mean, I talk say, after two weeks. But we try to make it be at least a weekly thing. But we have to talk to each other. And that is where many folks, Almighty God, have gone wrong. Because they think that now that they're in the same house, they don't need. You can be in the same house. And you are apart. Because what got you together in the first place was because you spent time and talking with each other. And if you sit down and think back, the only reason why you like the person is because you start talking to them. So now we, we get a, a, getting an understanding of the power that lies in communication. It is hard work, but you have to make the time to do it. Spend the time brethren. Spend the time husband. Spend the time wife. Talk to your spouse. Parents, spend the time talk to your children. And suppose if he come to you and talk to you about the same thing 100 times, listen to him. Look here, I don't know how God do it, you know. For somebody living together 20 years, what is it that you're going to find to talk about? Talk about what happened during the day. One more time, go back to your dreams and your aspiration. One more time, go back to what happened at work. I can't tell you some of the names of some of the people that my wife working with. And she knows because some of the time I call the name them to her, which tells her that your husband is listening to what you are saying. On many occasions I do it, I call the name. What about such and such, such and such? So she know that I am giving and listening here to what she said. So I am saying that we need to talk. It's hard work, you know, it's hard to do. Because some of the time you come in and you're tired and the only thing you want to do now is he did in a bed and go sleep. But no. While your husband is eating, ladies, sit at the table and talk with him. Yes, Jesus, I feel that one. Sit at the table and talk with him. Spend 15 minutes and talk with him. And I tell you that you're going to see a difference in your relationship. So relationship breakdown because communication ceases. Communication ceases. So if the communication stops, the feelings gone. We need to communicate clearly to avoid misunderstanding that may cause hurt, anger, or confusion. And this is why it's important that we need to know how to express ourselves. Oh Lord Jesus. But may I tell you, may I try hard. Since, you know, as I go through this, may I try hard faith. Fit, fit, fit. Be professional. We must try hard to avoid the misunderstanding that may cause hurt, anger, or confusion. No matter with the name calling, man. You can't have your wife and call her girl.
I tell the man say I'm worthless. But how is it that how is it that we can express what is in our heart in love? So we need to communicate clearly. Next slide. We need to communicate clearly. So that we avoid all of the hurt and misunderstanding. If you want to communicate better in your relationship, then you have to one make your case, state your ideas, listen and understand your partner, and build a strong foundation. All right, so let us go now and, and, and look at make your case. You know, with time far gone, but let us look at look at making your case. We must learn how to make our case. And what do I mean by, you know, when I say learn to, to make our case? We must learn to say what we mean. One, when we're making our case, the first thing we need to do is to learn to say what we mean. Sometimes we expect our partner to understand our hidden meanings but wishing or relying on this isn't fair to your partner or effective so your partner is not a mind reader so this is why we need to know try to explain what is it that we are saying and what is it that we want to say so that the partner understand it exactly as all we want them to understand it. No matter how well you know and love each other, you cannot read your partner's mind. I think I alluded to it earlier on. You can't read your partner's mind. So you must find a way to express yourself so that your partner can understand exactly what it is that you are saying to him or her. Instead, lay out your thoughts directly. And I want to tell us that when we lay out our thoughts, we need to, if you have to, write it down on a paper. Write it down on a paper. But brother Bailey, me talk, me, me married for much years. Why do I need to write it down on a paper? If you are going to say what you mean, what you mean, you are going to have to learn to construct your thought. And what is it that you want to say? And how is it that you are going to say it before you say it? When you make your case, provide concrete examples of what you mean. So your words make more sense. Don't compare. B, speak slow enough for your partner to understand you. Don't just blurt out all your anger and feelings. He or she won't be able to follow the line of thought. That this is what I said earlier on. That is what you need. That is why you need to write down what it is that you are going to say. You might not come before your partner with a paper, you know. But for you, for you to be able to pre present your case, write down what you, what you want to say. Or you're brilliant so you can go through what is it that you want to say in your mind more than one time. So that when you come to talk, you don't just blur out everything. No, you don't. I talk fast some of the time, you know. I have to try and slow. I talk fast and low. So, so I have to, to try and, and slow down some of the time and, 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 and try and tone down, right? But we have to prepare what is it that we are going to say. Go through it in our minds so that we, when we make our case, we can come down and speak slowly, slow enough that our partner can understand what is it that we are trying to communicate. So don't blurt out all of your angry feelings 
as a matter of fact, if you can speak without letting your partner know that you are angry, it's even better. The Bible now, in Proverbs 21, verses 11, it says, A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. It is hard to do. But, if you want to get the communication right, you are going to have to practice this. You can't just come and the thing anger you. And you just blurt out. And when you blurt out now, I say, Jesus, you know, boy, I never really mean it. You take the spouse that you boy, the spouse, I say, boy, out of the heart, the mouth, speak it. And when the words go forward, I can't pull it back. So a fool gives vent to his anger. But a wise man keeps himself under control. So it's important that we know that when we're making our case. Because the thing that is happening, you know, is not pleasing to us. Sometimes it's hurting our feelings. So we're talking to a partner now about it. And the first thing that we're supposed to do now is to make our case. Because when I present this to my partner, my partner is now going to understand that I am making a valid point. If he is interested, if he is willing to work on it, or she is willing to work on it. And they are going to now look into what I'm saying. So if I don't want my partner to become defensive, if I don't want him to come to the same level of anger that I am and if I don't want certain things to happen, then I'm going to have to remain cool, under control, level-headed, and be able to present my case. The Bible in Proverbs, again, 15, verse 1, it says, A gentle answer turn away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. So, you know, you, you, you don't think about, you, you don't think about writing the thing down on the paper. Yes, I want to say it again. You don't think about writing the thing, or you don't think about going through before you present your case. But you just come down and just talk because you have a mouth. When we speak in anger, our thoughts are impaired. It is better to engage our thoughts before we engage our mouth. It is better to engage our brain before we engage our mouth. The wise man will count his words. The wise man will count to ten. So even when the partner blazing up, the wise man will say, look here, one, two, three, four, and count to ten before he gives an answer. Because if he answer you right away, it's going to be something that probably you don't like. And that going to escalate the thing and you're going to have to ask for forgiveness and all kind of something. So if we don't want to reach this, we must understand you know, that look here. Is a human, is another human being you're dealing with, you know, with emotions and with feelings. So there might be a time where the person talks about that emotion and you must understand that look here, it is not God, he's another man like yourself, and they're going to talk out of emotions. But at the same time, if we're saying something, we must learn to gauge our thoughts. We must learn to gauge what it is that we are going to say before we say it. Else we are going to find ourselves in trouble. Find ourselves saying, no, that look here, we never mean it. It just came out. You ever hear that before? We never mean it, man. It just, it just came out. Ah! Out of the heart, the mouth speaking. So Ephesians 4, verse 6, it says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath.
So we can't express ourselves properly in anger. It means then that we are going to have to now find a, 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 a better way of expressing ourselves. For years we have been expressing ourselves out of anger, not realizing that this is mashing up our relationship. So now we are going to have to find a better way of expressing ourselves. And I am saying to us that in order to make our case and express ourselves properly, we are going to have to know. Think about what is it that we are going to say. How is it that we are going to say it? We are going to have to choose our words correctly. So that we can now come and present our case. If I'm steaming now, it don't make sense to present the case now. Might as well I wait until I calm down. Wait until I come level-headed now. Then now I am able to express myself and my concerns after my engagement my brain. Right? Um, see Directly lean, lean out our thoughts, eliminate resentment and confusion about the motives. And sometimes we present our, 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 our case and, and we, we don't lay it out. So, some person might think that there is ulterior motives you know, for us to come and be saying this now. So uh, another reason we have for directly laying our thoughts, writing down the things, are, are going over the things before we say them, right? Is to eliminate resentment and confusion as it pertains to our motive. But motive is clear. We want the relationship to work. There is no price for speaking for as long as you can. Put forward your key points. And give your partner a, choice, a, a chance to respond. You know, some people as they're presenting them case. And when they're presenting them case, they want to go as long as possible. So that your partner can't even bother to listen to what you're saying. But it's important for us now to put forward our key points. And give our partner a chance to respond. So don't keep talking until your partner is overwhelmed. You know, some people have this, you know, once the, the partner gives them the floor, no, no, they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and, and just keep talking until you mention so much things to your partner. No. But you want to express yourself. But don't go too long. Express yourself. That is why it's important for us to go over it through in our minds. If we have to write it down on paper, we write it down. But we want to be able to express ourselves in, a short, in, in, in the shortest possible time. But making sure that our partner understands exactly what it is that we are trying to say to them. The survey that we made mention of earlier on also found that men and women have different communication complaints. Proverbs 21 verse 19. 70 percent of the expert survey said that men cited nagging and complaining as the top communication problem in marriage. Ladies, ladies, not because there is a problem. It means that every turn the man turn, they go and say it to him. You have to pick your spot and pick your time. How is it and what is it that you're going to say? You can imagine I leave my shirt or I leave my marina in the chair. And even when we take it up today, the least least little thing come up. I saw you left the shirt on the marina, the, the marina in the chair. I mean, how always have to be taking it up. So we can't be nagging, nagging ladies. I know the man, the, the men why be nagging. But men, we can't be nagging, nagging. It is not good. We must learn to just pick a time, 
come together and have a discussion. And this is why I am saying to us that if we practice, set a time, set apart a time each and every day that you can talk and you talk together. When you do that, it will become easier for you to express yourself. It will become easier for you to talk about the situation. You think about the thing during the day, but at dinner table now, because you always spend the time and talk with your husband at the dinner table. Talk with your wife at the dinner table. You, because you've got proof in your mind, you can have a discussion. You don't have to set a time, you know. If you practice talking to your partner every day, you don't have to know set a time and say, look here, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we're going to have a discussion about this. No, because you have the communication going on every day. So coming in and talk is just going to be unnatural. So if you're able to have a floor to express, express that thing, we don't have to call and for a meeting to discuss it. So two, using the I army statements, and this is very important, important. Don't start an argument or don't start trying to address the matter by accusing your partner of making a mistake. But I just tell him how the thing or how you mean that I'm accusing him. Once you start the statement and say, you always, right away your partner begin to build up a wall. Because no one wants to be accused. And when you start the statement by saying, you always do that, you're accusing. Look here, you're talking about the fact, you know. Because... If the per person leaves the shoes or the marine or something there, and you say, you leave the thing there, he know that he leave it there, and about once you start the statement with you, the person feel like you're accusing them, and once somebody feels like you're accusing them, they build up a guard. And that person now will be less likely to listen to what it is that you have to say. Right away by saying you always. It's an argument you start. And no other time we don't understand why the argument starts. All me answer to him is he leave the shoes right there. So. But it's how you start the statement. And hear me now. I accuse you how you start the statement. You see? But look here. No one likes to be accused. So let us start the conversation without accusation. Instead, you can start the conversation this way. By using the I me statement. By saying something like, I have noticed. Or lately I have been feeling. And I am going to tell you that it is best. You use something that will express how is it that you are feeling. Yes, use something that will express how is it. Use a word. So I am feeling upset. I am feeling angry. I am feeling something. Use, let, let us find the, the, the words that express our feelings so that when we are now making our case we can make our case properly by expressing how we feel when we express how we feel if the partner is interested and if the partner loves you he in turn now is going to want to stop hurting your feelings But, 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 minister, I'm just going to make myself vulnerable if they mention me feel hurt or me feel disrespected. 
So how you feel this is But well, one of the feeling words, you understand what I'm saying? But use one of the feeling words to express how is it that you are feeling. If your partner loves you and if your partner is concerned about how what he is doing makes you feel, he's going to want to change that action so that you can feel better. But I guarantee you that if you start this statement by accusing the partner, you are going to automatically get resentment. You are going to get a wall build up. You are going to get an argument. So it's best for us to use. And yes, I try and practice using the IB statements in my relationship. Um, it does not make me less of a man. It just makes my wife know how much I respect her, how much I love her. How is it that I want to express myself to her properly? So use the IME statement. Making the decision centered on your feelings will make your partner feel less like he's being accused and more like he is a part of a productive discussion. Even saying lately, I have been feeling a little neglected. So it's more consideratory than you have been neglecting me. It's the same thing, you know. But it's how you say it. So the statement all the while said, look here, it is not what you say, but how you say it. Sometimes it's about what you say. Sometimes it's about how you say it. But I am telling us that we need to practice the using the IME statements in our relationship so that our relationship can you know be better practice the is practice with, uh, we said earlier on communication is hard work and if communication is hard work then it's something that we are going to practice spouse it's not going to happen overnight but over time if it is practice How is it that we can say to our partner, you know, come let us pray? Because you see that your partner not praying for a while. But if you go to your partner and say, boy, a long time you not pray, they don't want to hear nothing from you even if you are talking the truth. So this is why, this is, look at your seat, this is why I tell you, you know, you have to just plan in your mind. Plan and say, Look, you are right. It down and say, This is how I'm going to say it. So, come, let us pray together. You see that them drop off of the prayer life, you know. What you're going to just go to them and say, Come, let us pray. And even if they don't want to pray, and you look and, and read the end on them and pray still. But let us practice to say, I feel, I believe, I would like. It would, mean a, it would mean a lot to me if you. I love it when you. So what we do, we're taking off the, 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 the thing from our, the accusation from our, our partner. And we are expressing our feelings. And we are saying that if the partner is concerned about how we are feeling, then they are going to want to fix the situation. Though you will be essentially saying the same thing through the IME statement, this soft blow delivery will make your partner less defensive and more likely to communicate openly. And that is what we are trying to do. We are not trying to hurt anybody feelings we're not trying to let anybody feel ashamed we're not trying to let anybody cry but we are trying to fix our relationship we are trying to move past this thing that has, has, has set back our relationship and in moving past this thing 
We're going to find out that using the IME statement will lessen the blow of how we deliver our message. And delivering our message is extremely important. The next slide. All right. So this tree, you know, would say, keep us calm as I can. I'm going to stop here because we have gone a good time. But really, you know, communication is, you know, extremely important in our relationship, irrespective of the relationship that you have, right? So it's a relationship with God. You must have your time that you sit down and talk with God. If a relationship with your children, parents, you need to develop your relationship with your children. How is it that you are going to do this? It's by spending the time. Yes, they're in the room, but you need to go in there. You need to sit down and you need to talk with them. Ask them what is it that, you know, they, they, they plan on doing. You know, you, you have two years leaving school. What is it that you're going to do? What is it that you want? You, how is it? How is it? You need to sit down and you need to discuss them. Discuss with them. Your relationship with your wife, you need to, to husband, you need to make sure that, you know, you spend the time and talk to your spouse. It is extremely important. You will not develop feeling for God. You will not develop feeling for a friend. You will not develop feeling for somebody that you're going to get married to unless you communicate. Communication is very powerful. And it's important that we keep the communication going if we are going to have a successful marriage, if we are going to have a successful relationship. Um, if we're going to have a good relationship with God, then the communication is important. If we're going to keep it tight, then we must get it right. If we get the communication right, then it's going to be tight. It's going to be hard to separate two people that communicate a lot. And I'm challenging us tonight as, as individuals. And as married folks, keep the communication going. God bless you tonight. By way of announcement, remember Sunday again. It's the second leg of Ignite. You know, our young people will be in charge of the service. And we're going to ask as many that can stream it, stream, stream and support the service. Pray much for the service. Right? So as you go into the weekend, pray for the starter, pray for the moderator, and pray for the preacher. You know, last Sunday was good. We get a good word, you know, Sunday morning and Sunday night. But look here, fresh bread, you know, Sunday morning. So we are asking us to pray, you know, much for the service. Other announcement, um, Sister Carmela Garden, you know, she lost her brother and she lost her mother. And we are going to ask you, know, that is Sister Jigo's wife. We are going to ask you to just Keep the family in prayer. You know, right now, you know, restriction is uh, because of COVID. But we are asking you now to just continue to pray for the family. Then, sister, the funeral for the mother and the brother is tomorrow. So just, just bear them up in prayer. Then the sister of Rosalie Baker, sister Rosalie Baker, sorry, passed on yesterday. And we are going to ask you to, you know, remember the family in prayer right god bless us let us keep safe and continue to serve the lord amen just bow your heads while i pray father we thank you tonight for your blessings for your love and your mercies one more time we thank you great god for this knowledge about communication as it pertains to our relationship we pray god that going forward lord jesus that we can have better relationships and that we can uh, be better individuals, mighty God. Better partners to our spouse. We pray, God, that you will touch all the marriages right now, God. And we know, God, that it can work. And you know, great Jesus, that irrespective of what is all right, you can fix it. And it can be fixed if both parties make up in their mind that, you know, they want it fixed. Uh, we know, God, that what you have put together that you said, let no man put a soldier. We pray, Lord Jesus, for each and every person that tune in, for each and every person that will tune in, that they will receive a blessing from hearing your word. We thank you tonight, once again, 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.